Hello viewers, welcome to now taking you through the story for a level pure mathematics and this video will be on derivatives of trigonometrical functions. So this video is suitable for students in both senior 5 and senior 6 offering principal mathematics as part of their combination. Now in the list of mathematical tables which I believe you already have, there are some standard derivatives. So these are the standard derivatives. This is the function and this is the column for derivatives. In other words, what that means that when I differentiate cos, I come up with negative sine x. When I differentiate sine x, I come up with positive cos x. When I differentiate tan x, I come up with sec squared x. Differentiate sec x, I come up with sec x tan x. Differentiate cosec x, I come up with negative cosec cot x. And when I differentiate cot x, I come up with negative cosec squared x. Now these functions are available in your mathematical logbook. So if you look at your logbooks and you go to formula number 54, it has this table. And that table is where you extract those derivatives from. For example, I think you can see this, the derivative, this is the trig function, this is the trig function. Then also these last ones, this, this, and that. So those are the main functions of interest in this video. So that means that there's no need to to struggle and memorize them as long as you have the mathematical logbook you are well sorted so there are some things we need to note one is that all the core functions have a negative sign on their derivative so sometimes students fail to understand which one has a negative and which one has a positive so what you need to know is that as long as the function has core on it, it will have a negative derivative. For example, this cos has co, so it will have a negative derivative. This cosec has co, it will have a negative derivative. And this cot has co, it will have a negative derivative. Another note we need to make to understand is that all trig functions can only be differentiated if and only if the angles are measured in radians. What does that mean? It means that this x is in radians. All these x you see here, they are in radians. That one is very vital because sometimes they will give you an angle and it is in degrees. So you have, to first, uh, you have to first change it to radians by remembering that 1 degree is equal to pi over 180 rad. So now we shall start going to derivative. So that was an introduction. Now we shall go to derivative of trig functions from first principles. So all the all the trig functions we saw previously can be got from first principles. For example, what we need to know is in, in first principles is that if y is equal to fx, it implies that dy dx will be equal to limit as small change in x tends to zero of small change in y, small change in x, where this is a small increment in x and this is a small increment in y. Now this statement may look a little vague, in other words, may, you may be wondering what does it really mean. So for you to understand it very well, you need to go through the worked examples. So we are going to go through these questions. Question 1 says, differentiate the following function with respect to x from first principles. So note this word from first principles. When they say that, you have to remember this line. Now let us see how this line is applied. And we shall look at all those standards, all those standard derivatives we saw. We saw the one for cos, for sine, tan, sec, cosec, and cot. So we are going to see from first principles how does the derivative come about. So you start with part A, which had cos. Now if you look at cos here, the answer for cos has to be negative sine x. So we are going to use first principles to come up with that answer. So the first thing to do is to let y be equal to this given function, which is cos x. After that, remember there were increments, so we have to increment each side by small change. So this y is incremented by small change in y. And this x is incremented by a small change in x. I think we realize that it is x which is incremented and decide it is y which is incremented. And note that they are in bracket, this angle is in bracket. 
so that we shall bring this one on this on this side when i bring it on the other side you realize that when y goes this side i remember that y is equal to cos x so it's the same as this which is this minus cos x because now we are remaining with small change in y so this one has gone this side and when it crosses this side it will have to express it in terms of x which is cos x as you can see it here the next is to remember factor formula i think you remember that under the video of trigonometrical identity so cos minus cos is negative sine sine so negative 2 sine the angle at the two angles divide by 2 so this plus this divide by 2 gives you 2x plus more change in x over 2 then this sign will have this minus this divide by 2 to come up with more change in x over 2 now one thing we need to know is that for small angles measured in radians sign of that angle approximates to that very angle so as long as it is a small this angle is very small you should remember that sign that very angle will approximate to that very angle i think you realize that i'm using the symbol approximate so what i'm going to do i'm going to substitute where there is sign small change in x over 2 i'll come up and make it small change in x over 2 the rest will remain the same then from there I realize that this 2 and this 2 can cancel and I remain with negative small change in x multiplied by sine 2x plus small change in x over 2 which is this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this one this side to become small change in x, small, ch small, sorry, small change in y, small change in x being equal to negative sine that which is here. After that, I remember the definition that dy dx is equal to small change in x, small change in y in the limit as small change in x tends to zero. So, what does this mean? Let's see what it means. It means that where there is small change in x, we are going to put there zero because it tends to zero. So, this one will tend to zero. That's why you see a zero there. Then now that we realize that, now it is 2x over 2, which becomes x as you can see it here, and this negative is there. I think that is the very derivative which is in your mathematical table. If you look at it, cos, derivative of cos x is negative sine x, which we have got here. So what that's what first derivative, first principles means. So that was cos. What about sine? Sine we know that differentiating sine x gives you cos x so we have to use first principles to see how that cos x comes about now the procedure is the same as the one in the previous as the one used in part a so what we, what we shall do first let y to be equal to sine x then from there we increment each side by small change so small this side will be incremented by small change in y and this side will be incremented by small change in x. The next is that this y crosses to this side, and when it crosses, it changes to a variable x, to, so that's why there is sine x there. The news factor formula sine minus sine is 2 cos sine. So cos is the one with the bigger angle, so it will be this plus this over 2 to give you this, and this minus this over 2 gives you that. The next is to remember that as long as this is a small angle, sign that angle approximates to that very angle. So know that we are using the approximation sign. So next is substitute where there is sign, I'll put the small change in x over 2. Then next I'll realize that these two and these two cancels to remain with only small change in x. Then from there, I'll, I'll bring this one this side to come up with small change in y, small change in x equal to cos this angle then from there i remember the definition of dy dx that is that so what does that mean it means that where there is small change in x you put there zero and in the end we shall come up with cos x i think we realize that this is the very derivative in your mathematical table so that is what first principles means so now we shall go to part C where they want the derivative of tan x. So now for tan x, 
you realize that tan x derivative is x squared x. So we have to use first principles to come up with that answer. So first we shall relate tan x y b equal to that function which is tan x. But we know we already know that tan x is the same as cos sorry sine over cos. Therefore y will be equal to sine x over cos x. The next is to increment both sides. So this side increment by small change in y and this side increment x by small change in x. The next is to take this one this side and when it goes this side it becomes sine x over cos x as you can see it here. So the procedure will always remain the same. The next is to get the LCM. So LCM for this is this multiplied by this as you can see it here. Then from there you will say this LCM divide by this you realize that this one cancels and remain with this so this multiplied by this gives you this part. Then still this LCM divided by this you realize that this cancels so remain with this so this multiplied by this gives you this part. The minus is maintained. So now next is to remember compound angle. For example, if this x plus motion in x is a and this x is b, we are using that because in the mathematical table we have angles a and b. This will also be a and this will be b. Now when you compare, you realize that sine a minus b is the same as sine a cos b minus cos a sine b in your mathematical table. So in this case we have instead of a we have x plus motion in x and instead of b we have x. Therefore the whole of this will become sine a minus b which is x plus motion in x minus x as you can see it here. So next you realize that from here you realize that this and this cancel so remain with sine small change in x as the numerator. The denominator is not tampered with, so you leave it as it is. Now from there we shall now make our assumption that sine small change in x approximates to small change in x. Now previously we were using sine small change in x over 2, but now we are using only sine small change in x. Why? Because it depends on the expression you have. Now in this expression we only have sine small change in x. That is why it's one we are using here. Therefore, this one will become small change in x. Now from there, like I said, the next step is to take this one this side to become small change in y, small change in x is equal to 1 over this. Then from there is to remember the definition for dy dx limit as small change in x tends to 0. So what does that mean? It means that where there is small change in x, you will keep on putting 0. And in the end, you will come up with this so cos x multiplied by cos x becomes cos squared x. And we know, already know that 1 over cos is sec, therefore 1 over cos squared will become sec squared. And I think that is the very expression in your mathematical logbook as you can see it here. So that was part C. Now we shall go to part D where they want you to differentiate sec x from first principles. So in your mathematical table, sec x is equal to sec, tan, sec x tan x. So we have to use first principles to come up with this expression. The procedure will always remain the same. Let y be equal to that. Then sec x is the same as 1 over cos. Then from there, increment each side, both sides. After that, I'll take y on this side. That's why there is this 1 over cos x because y is 1 over cos x. The next is LCM. LCM getting the LCM gives you that. Then next is to, rem is to get that. Th now here, what I've done, I've used factor formula because cos minus cos is negative to sine sine. Therefore, this angle plus this angle divided by two gives you this part. And then this minus this angle divided by two gives you negative. Not that there is a negative here, so negative, small change in x, small change in y. The denominator will remain the same. But I already know that sine, 
this sign oh, sign of a negative angle is the same as negative sine that angle therefore this negative will come out and it will cancel with this because negative times a negative gives a positive that is why you see here there is positive 2 and here it is a positive angle now the next is to make our assumption and then substitute that assumption so where there is this we shall put there a small change in x over 2 the next we shall realize that these two and these two cancels to remain with that the next is to take this motion in x on this side to come up with this then from there we shall remember the definition for dy dx that means that where there is small change in x we put there 0 then in the end we shall come up with that now this sine x over cos squared x is the same as one sign can go with this cos to come up with sine x over cos x then the remaining cos is what is here then from there remember that one over cos is sec x and sine over cos is tan x and i think that is the derivative which is in your mathematical table as you can see it here So now we shall go to part E where they want the derivative of cosec x. Now the derivative of cosec x is negative cosec x cot x. So let's see how it is got from first principles. The, as the, the procedure, like I said, it will always be the same as long as they mention the word first principles. So the procedure is to first let y be equal to that function. Then from there, express in terms of standard value trig ratios, which is sine, cos, and tan. Now, in this case, cosec x is 1 over sine. Then from there, you increment both sides. So this side will be incremented by small change in y, and this side, the angle is incremented by small change in x. Then from there, take this y, this side. But when it goes this side, it has to be expressed in terms of x, as you can see it here. The next is LCM. And after LCM, it is factor formula. So sine minus sine is co to cosine, where cos has a bigger angle. Therefore, this plus this divided by 2 gives you this angle. Then this minus this divided by 2 gives you that angle. Then remember that sine of a negative angle is equal to negative sine, that very angle. That is why this negative goes out and comes here. That is why here you see there is now a negative 2, and the angle is now positive. The denominator is untampered with. Now, next is the assumption. After the assumption, you shall come and substitute the assumption whereby where there was sine small change in x over 2, you shall put the small change in x over 2. The next, rather, this and this can cancel to come up with negative small change in x multiplied by this over this denominator. Then from there, take this one, this side to come up with small change in y, small change in x. The next is to remember the definition for dy dx, which will be that where there is small change in x, you put there 0. That's why you see that 0 there and this 0 here. Then from there, you re reduce this one now. 2x over 2 is x. That is why you see here negative cos x. And here sine x multiplied by sine x gives you sine squared x. Now from that step, one sign here in the denominator will go with this and the other sign will be here. Now sine over cos gives you cot and one over sine gives you cosec. But there's this negative here so it is maintained. That's Therefore the final answer will be negative cosec x cot x. And I think that is a very valid expression in your mathematical table as you can see it here. So now we shall go to part F where they want you to get the derivative of cot x. Now from your mathematical table, the derivative of cot x is negative cosec squared x. So we have to use first principles to come up with this expression. The procedure is the same like I've already said. So the first thing to do is to let y be equal to cot x. The next is to express in terms of the three standard ratios which is cos, sine and tan. Now cot x is the same as cos over sine. 
The next is to increment both sides. This side will increment by small change in y and this side increment x by small change in x. The next is to take this y this side. Well, when it comes this side, it, it is expressed in terms of x as you can see it here. The next is LCM. So LCM gives you that. Then from there is to remember a factor formula that this one is the same as the whole of this numerator is the same as sine in brackets x minus x plus more change in x. I think we already explained that in the previous solutions. The numerator, the denominator remains the same. So now this one, this x and this x cancels this this negative and the small change in x gives you negative small change in x. But you already know that sine of a negative angle is the same as negative sine that very angle. That is now that now here the negative has come out to become negative sine small change in x. The denominator is untampered with. Then after that we shall make our assumption that small change in, if this is for small angles measured in radians, this approximates to that. Therefore, we shall come out there and substitute. Where there was this, we shall put there uh, this. Then take this one, this side, to come up with this. And from there, we shall remember the definition for dy dx. Therefore, dy dx will be equal to that. So where there is much in x, we shall put there uh, 0. So that in the end, we shall come up with negative 1 uh, over sine squared x. Because this is sine x multiplied by sine x. But 1 over sine is cosec, therefore 1 over sine squared x is cosec squared x. And I think that is the same expression in your mathematical table. So that is how first principles is dealt with. But we shall go through some more examples which are a little unique and not in your mathematical table. For example, if you look at question 2, they said differentiate cos squared x with respect to x from first principles. So as long as you see this word first principles, the procedure is always the same. First step is to let. So we are going to let y be equal to this given function as you can see it here. The next is to increment both sides. So this side is incremented by small change in y and this angle is incremented by small change in x. The next is to take y this side. So when I take it this side, it will become this. Because when it goes this side, y has to be expressed in terms of x, as you can see it here. But I still have to simplify it. So this one, when I simplify, it will be, this is difference of two squares. So one bracket will have subtraction, another bracket will have addition. Now this part with subtraction, cos minus cos is negative 2 sine sine. So this part gives you this factor formula. Then cos plus cos is positive 2 cos cos, so this bracket gives you this factor formula. Then from there, I'll make my assumption and then substitute. Now here we have added sine. We have been used to sine, but now what if it is cos? So cos of a small angle approximates to 1. Always remember that. Cos of a small angle approximates to 1, but sine of a small angle approximates to that very angle. So you come and substitute where there was sine small change in x over 2, we shall put there this, and where there was this, we shall put there 1. That is why here we are left with only 2 cos that which is here. Now, this step you realize that this 2 and this 2 can cancel so remain with only this 2 so this 2 will come here to become negative 2 small change in x multiplied by this and that so that is what we are going to write in our next step so that gives you small change in y as this the next is to remember double angle. So double angle, if the whole of this is A, okay, if it is theta or let's say A, A, it implies that 2 sine A cos A is equal to sine 2 A. Therefore, that is why you see here that this angle has been multiplied by 2 to come up with this angle. I think we realize that now this 2 is no longer here because it, it is under the expansion of the double angle 
angle but the negative is maintained and the small change index is maintained the next is take this one this side to come up with small change in y small change in x after that you shall remember the definition of dy dx so where there is small change in y, x we shall put there 0 to come up with negative sine 2x That was question 2. Now we shall go to question 3 which says that show from first principles that the derivative of sine x raised to the power a half is equal to a half cos x square root of sine x. So as long as you see the word first principles, the procedure remains the same as before. So the first thing to do is to let. So let y be equal to this given function which is that. Now this power half is the same as square root. The next is to increment both sides. So increment y by small change in y and increment x by small change in x. The next is to take this y this side and when it goes this side, it is expressed in terms of x as you can see it here. The next is because there is this side, we are going to do some rationalizing. So the whole of this is the same as this over 1. That's why you see here that the denominator is 1. The reason is to help us to rationalize the function. So when I rationalize, it means that here it was plus, it was minus, here to be plus, and you do that for both numerator and denominator. So when I do that, I'll come up with this because for the numerator, it is difference of two squares, so it will become sine this minus sine that. For the denominator, it is 1 times this, so it remains this very expression as it is here, just as you can see it there. Then next, for the numerator, you use factor formula. So sine minus sine is 2 cos sine. So this plus this over 2 gives you that, and this minus this over 2 gives you that. The denominator is untampered with. So now next is to make an assumption. Or the assumption you shall substitute that assumption to come up with this. So whether it was sine small change in x over 2 shall become science you shall become small change in x over 2. The next is to realize that these two and these two cancels. Therefore, this goes going this side gives you small change in y, small change in x equal to this which is here as the numerator and this denominator which is untampered with. The next is to remember the definition for dy dx. So, is equal to, dy dx is given by that. Therefore, where there is small change in x, we put there 0, like, as you can see it here. And when that happens, we shall come up with this. So, this becomes cos x, which is here, and this one, square root of sine x plus square root of sine x gives you 2 square root of sine x. Now, this side cannot be left in the denominator. So, what we do, we have to rationalize. So when I rationalize, I'm applying both numerator and denominator by sine square root of sine x. Then now in the denominator, square root of sine x multiplied by square root of sine x gives you sine x. Now that sine x and this cos, remember that cos over sine is cot. That is why you see a cot x. Then 1 over this 2 gives you this a half. Then this one remains as it is and it is there. So that is what they wanted. So that was the first part. Next we shall now go to derivative of trig functions using chain rule. I think you remember chain rule under differentiation 1. And that chain topic of chain rule is also available on this platform. So this is used to determine the derivatives of Function in this case, one is three functions whose angles are multiplied by an integer or a rational number k or raised to a certain power, say power 2, power 3, power 4, like that. As you can see it here, this angle x has been multiplied by a certain integer which is k, or and or in this case, where the angle has been raised to a certain power, as you can see it there. So such, if they tell you to differentiate such a trig function, the first thing you should remember is chain rule. Then another case is when the trig functions are raised to a certain power n, e.g. Now here, 
the difference between this and this is that here it is the angle which is raised to certain power as you can see it here but also the whole trig function can be raised to certain power just as you can see it here so when you see this one it implies that the whole of sine x is raised to the power n so that is how they write powers in trigonometry so whenever you see this one what is here it means that it is the power of the whole of this tan x so we shall understand it more as we do examples Now let's start with this case one whereby the angle is raised to the third power or multiplied by an integer. So like we said examples are as these ones. Therefore we shall consider function say this one as our test function. So y equal to sine kx and this derivative is obtained by letting the uh, by letting the angle which is kx to be equal to a certain parameter say u and then use chain rule as shown below so let's see how chain rule is used in this case so when we have this function y equal to sine kx the whole of this angle is led to be a certain va variable which is u and that means that now y will remain equal to sine u so when I differentiate, differentiate this one, I'll come up with k. So when I differentiate for u equal to kx, when I differentiate with respect to x, I'll come up with du dx equal to k. Then for y equal to sin u, differentiate with respect to u, I'll come up with dy du equal to cos u. Think, remember that under our list of formulae in the mathematical table. The next is to use chain rule. Chain rule will say that dy dx is equal to dy du multiplied by du dx. Then I'll substitute dy du is equal to cos u which is that and du dx is k which is that. So the whole of this gives me k cos u. But remember we were the one who introduced in this u. Therefore you have to go back and remove it. So but u, we shall come as that, but u is equal to kx, what does that mean? It means that dy, du, dy dx is equal to k cos kx. Now that gives us a short way of differentiating such functions. So the concept behind chain rule for case 1. Case 1 I mean where the angle is raised to a certain power or it is multiplied by a certain integer. So the concept is simple and it is this one that dy dx will be equal to the function that would result after differentiation without altering the angle so the angle is maintained then you look at your mathematical table and find out which function would result for example in this case we are given sine and in your table when you look at sine the function that results is cos then they have told us you don't alter the angle so the angle which is here is the very angle you put that is this bracket what about this other bracket this other bracket says that you multiply it by derivative of the angle so look at this angle it is kx when i do when i differentiate kx i'll come up with k so i'll come and put it there so i think we realize that all these steps were would be unnecessary you could simply just move from here up to here if you are if you have such an such a mathematical I. So now we are going to use that concept to go through these questions first first. For example, question one says find y dx if y equal to this, y equal to this, and y equal to this. So let's start with part A. Part A says y is equal to sine 5x. So the angle is 5x. When I differentiate, I've asked myself what would result if I differentiate sine? What would result would be cos? So that is why you see here cos. Then we said the angle is maintained. So this was 5x, you maintain the angle. Then from there, you have to differentiate this angle. That is why you see here ddx. So ddx means derivative of 5x. And this derivative is 5. Therefore, when I apply this to, I'll come up with 5 cos 5x as the answer. 
So that was part A. What about part B? Part B we are given y equal to that. So still for the same procedure, what would result when I differentiate cos? It would be negative sign. That's why you see a negative sign. But the angle is maintained. So this very angle is what you put here. Then from there you differentiate the very angle. So differentiate this angle. That is why you see a ddx of this angle. So the question is, what do I get when I differentiate the angle? When I differentiate x cubed will give me 3x squared, differentiate 2x will give me 2, and differentiate 1 will give me 0. So in the end, I'll rearrange to come up with that as my derivative. So now we shall go to part c. So part c, we are given y equal to tan in brackets x to power 4 over 3. So the procedure is still the same. If you look at your mathematical table, tan x derivative will be sex squared sex squared so that is why you see a sex squared the angle is maintained which is that the number that you multiply by the derivative of the angle so the derivative of this angle is this therefore when I multiply the two I'll come up with that as my answer so that was question one now we shall go to question two which says if y is equal to this show that this is equal to this so this one means second derivative That we are given y, we are given that expression. When I differentiate it, I'll come up with this. I believe by now you are familiar with the concept. Differentiate the angle, which gives you a half, multiplied by this derivative, which is 6 squared, this very angle. So when I simplify this one, in terms of tan, is the same as 1 plus tan that angle. The reason why is because I already know y in terms of tan. Therefore, I'll come and substitute for y. Well, if y is equal to this, it, means it implies that tan squared this is equal to y squared. That is why there is y squared there. Then when I differentiate the second time, it I'll come up with this. So differentiate 1 is 0. Differentiate this, I'll come up with 2y dy dx. I think you remember that under implicit functions. And those videos are also available on this platform. So simplify, I'll come up with the required proof. That was question 2. Now we shall go to question 3, which says that given x is equal to r cos theta and y equal to r sin theta, show that this second derivative is equal to this. So I'll come and this one requires chain rule. So for this one, derivative will be dx d theta, which is that. So when I differentiate, when I differentiate cos, I'll come up with a negative sign. That is why you see a negative r sin theta. Then for this one, when I differentiate it, I'll come up with positive r cos theta because when I differentiate cos I'll come up with sorry when I differentiate sine I'll come up with cos therefore by chain rule dy dx is equal to dy d theta multiplied by the theta dx so dy d theta is this which is the numerator and d theta dx it implies that you get the reciprocal of this which would be 1 over this that's why it is the denominator Therefore, R cancels and cos over sine gives you cot, and this negative is maintained here. But remember, they want second derivative, so we are going to differentiate the second time. So, this differentiate this with respect to theta, which is that multiplied by d theta dx to come up with the second derivative of this with respect to x. Therefore, differentiate the, the, the whole of this is the same as this here. And this one is already got from here as the reciprocal, and that's why it is there. Now, when I differentiate cot theta, what do I get? Differentiate cot, I'll come up with negative cos x squared theta. But remember, there is a negative here, so that is why here it is positive. Then this one, 1 over sine is cosec, therefore negative is maintained here. Then this one over sine gives you cosec theta, and this r is maintained in the, in the denominator. Now this cosec squared theta multiplied by cosec theta gives you cosec cubed theta, and this negative is maintained here, and this r is also maintained. So basically that is what they wanted. So now we shall go to question 4, which is that given x is equal to that, and y is equal to that, show that this is equal to that. So still it's chain rule. So this x differentiate this x to come up with dx d theta equal to one minus cos theta. Then differentiate this y to come up with dy d theta equal to sine theta. Then 
then next is to use chain rule and substitute. The y d theta is that, and the x d theta is the reciprocal of this, so that's why it is in the denominator. But we have to simplify to come up with this, so we have to exp add in the identities of half angles. So sine theta is the same as 2 sine theta over 2 cos theta over 2. And this cos theta is the same as 1 minus 2 sine squared theta over 2. The when I simplify, this and this is 0, so I remain with this negative and this negative gives you positive, so I remain with positive 2 sine squared theta over 2 in the denominator, numerators untampered with. The next is to simplify these two cancels, then once this one sign goes with this sign and the other, the other sign remains, therefore cos of a sign gives you cot, and this is what they wanted. So that was case one where the power is raised, where the angle is raised to a certain power or the angle is multiplied by a certain integer. What about case two? Case two is when the function is raised the to is, is raised to a certain power. So previously it was only the angle, but now it is the whole function which is raised to a certain power, just as you can see these examples. So in this form, just know that we are now dealing with case. Two. Now, how do you deal with this case two? Let's consider a function y equal to sine y, sine raised to the power n, sine x raised to the power n. This can be written as this. I think remember that's what I told you that this power is the power of the whole of this function. So the whole of this is the same as this. So the whole of this function is raised to the power n. That is the simplest way you can easily understand it. So always when they write this, just know that it's the same as this, except when this uh, when this one is negative one, because when it's negative one, it is no longer a power; it is now an inverse, as we shall see towards the end of the video. So if the derivative is obtained by letting the trigonometrical function inside the bracket, so in this case the one inside the bracket is sine x, you let it to be equal to a certain parameter, say u, and then use chain rule as shown below. So in this case, this one, the, is the, the u will now be the one in the bracket, which is sine x. Therefore, you remain with y raised the power, sorry, u, y equal to u to power n. So for this one, differentiating it, I'll come up with u dx equal to cos x. And this one, differentiating it, I'll come up with dy du equal to u, sorry, n multiplied by u to power n minus 1. Think remember this is the principle for under differentiation one and the videos are also available in this platform now from chain rule dy dx is equal to dy du multiplied by du dx so dy du is this and du dx is this so when i apply come up with this but remember we are the ones who introduced in the u so we have to again eliminate it so just so that sine is u is equal to sine x so where there is u, we shall remove it and put there uh, sine x. So let's see that in the next slide. So in the end, we shall come up with that. So basically, this just like just like in case one, we had a concept. Even here, there is a concept which can be used so that you don't go through all those steps you have gone through. So what is that concept? The concept is look at the power and write it here, then multiply by the function, but with the power reduced by one. So the function, the given function, the of, but the power reduced by one is what result. Remember in case one, here it was the would be derivative and will be got from the mathematical table. But now here, you don't differentiate it yet. What you do, write that very function but reduce its power by one. Just as you see it here, it was sine x to power n, but now it is sine x to power n minus one. What about this last term? Last term is the derivative of the function inside the bracket. Now the function inside the bracket was sine x, so differentiate sine x will come up with cos x, that is why you see it here. So with that concept, you can bypass all that hassle of using chain rule and you'll still get the same marks. 
So let's see how that concept is used in these questions. So question one says find y dx if y is equal to this, y is equal to this, and y is equal to that. So let's start with part a. Part a y is equal to sec x sec x to power cubed to power three. So this one is a written is the same as this, just like I've told you. Then from there, I'll say that dy dx is equal to this power, which is here. Then reduce this power, write this very function, but with the power reduced by 1, that's why you see here 3 minus 1. Then multiply by the derivative of this bracket, that's why you see here ddx of that. So when you do that, let's see what comes out. So this is maintained. This one now, the power it becomes 2, and differentiating this gives me sec x tan x. Therefore, rearranging it gives you 3 sec cubed. So, because this is squared and multiplied by sec, gives you sec cubed. Then, tan is there. So, basically, that is what they wanted in that part. What about in part B? Part B, you are given this and the same as that. Therefore, you still go through the same procedure. Look at this power, bring on the power, which is that. Then reduce the power by 1 to come up with this. Then div differentiate the inner bracket. So the inner bracket is cosec x. So you have to differentiate it. So when I do that, I'll come up with this 5. And this one, the power will now be 4. And this derivative will be from our mathematical table. It is negative cosec x cot x. Then rearrange to come up with negative. So this negative and this one gives you negative 5. Then this one is... Then this power 4 and multiplied by this gives you cosec x power 5. Then this one is here. So that was part B. What about part C? Part C they wanted the derivative of cot squared x. This is the same as cot x in brackets raised to the power 2. So the procedure is the same. Bring down the power, reduce the power by 1, then divide, differentiate the inner bracket. So the inner bracket is cot x. You have to differentiate it. When you do that, you shall come up with 2 here, and this power is 1 now, and this derivative is negative cos x squared x. Rearrange will come up with that, and basically that's what they wanted. So that is all about case 2. Now what, let's go to case 3. Case 3 is when they combine case 1 and case 2. Remember, in case 1, it was the angle which was raised to a certain power or multiplied by an integer. And in case 2, it was the whole function which was raised to a certain power. Now, when they combine the two, how do you differentiate that? So that is what you are going to deal with in this case 3. So examples of such include this. I think you can see here, the angle is multiplied by a certain integer and the whole function is raised to a certain power. Here the angle is raised to a certain power and multiplied by a certain integer and also the whole function is raised to a certain power. So such functions, you, that is what we call case 3. So let's see how such are handled. So derivative of such functions is obtained by combining the two methods used in both cases 1 and case 2. So what, how do you combine them? We shall come up with this. That n, which is the power, then multiply by the function but with the power reduced by 1 then multiply by derivative of the function inside the bracket as in case 1. So this is the formula which is used to differentiate. As long as you have this in mind you can be able to work out questions under case 3. So let's see some of the examples. Example 1 says find y dx if y equal to cot raised to the power 4 cot x I think this is cot 4x power 4 everything raised to the power 4 so in this case the angle is raised to a certain power and also multiplied by a certain integer and also the whole function is raised to a certain power so let's see how that is done First of all, we shall remember that the whole of this is the same as this, because now this power is what has gone out. So that remain with cot 4x power 4 inside the bracket. Then you remember the procedure is that bring down the power, which is this 4, reduce the power by 1. So here it was 4, now it will become 4 minus 1 the power. Then differentiate the inner bracket. The inner bracket is this, which is there. 
So when you simplify that, you shall come up with this 4 here, and this one now the power is 3. Then this derivative, I think you remember it, the, fun the formula says, differentiate this angle, so differentiate 4, x power 4 gives you 16x to power 3. Just this without this negative. Then after that, you'll differentiate cot. Now when I differentiate cot, when you look at your mathematical table, when I differentiate cot, I get cosec squared. Now here, that's why you see here cosec squared, but the angle is maintained. So here, here it was 4x to power 4, here it also remains 4x to power 4. But remember, we also said, as long as there is co, the answer must have a negative. That is why there is a negative there. So when I rearrange, I'll come up with that. So that is question 1. What about question 2? says so differentiate this with respect to x. So this WRT means with respect to whenever you see it in a question. So still the same procedure. The whole of this is the same is the same as sign this angle, everything raised to the power 2. So the procedure is bring down the power, which is this. Reduce the power by 1, you'll come up with this one because anything to power 1 remains that very function. Then from there, you are going to differentiate the inner bracket. Differentiate the inner bracket. The inner bracket is sine in brackets 4x squared plus 5. Therefore, 4x squared plus 5, differentiate this angle, you'll come up with this. Then when I differentiate sine, I'll come up with cos. The angle is maintained. Then when I rearrange, I'll come up with that as the and that and this one now I can still reduce it because this is now double angle because this angle is the same as this angle. So if this is a, do you realize that this one is also a? So I'll borrow one two here to remain with so two times eight. That is why there is eight there because the two has gone here to become two sine a cos a, which it becomes sine two a. Now the a is this angle here. Therefore, we'll come up with sine 2 multiplied by this very angle which is here. And when this 2 comes inside, I'll come up with that and that is what they wanted. So now we have seen the three cases where chain rule is applied. So now the next part is now how to apply product formula to differentiate trigonometrical functions. I think you remember product formula under differentiation 1 and those videos are available on this platform. So we are going to go straight to the questions. So question 1 says find y dx if y is equal to this and part b y is equal to that. So let's look at those solutions. So for part a this is what is given. So like we said for product formula you let one to be u and another one to be v. So u is the whole of this the whole of this will be let to this one will be let to be u as you can see it here. Therefore, the whole of this is the same as sine x raised to the power 3. And this other part will now become v as you can see it here. Then from there, I have to differentiate both. So du dx gives me this. I think you remember how to differentiate side because you bring on the power, reduce the power by 1, and differentiate the inner bracket. What about this one? This one, this one gives you negative sine 3x. I believe by now you should know how to get such derivative. So you shall go a bit fast fast. Now from product formula, we shall know that product formula is as follows. That v du dx plus u dv dx is equal to dy dx. Therefore, I'll come and substitute for v here. This v is this. Then du dx is that. Then u is this and v dx is that. So when I simplify, I'll come up with that as the required derivative. So now we shall go to part b where they want to differentiate x squared sine x. So still we shall use product formula where this one will become u and this other part will become v. So differentiate du here du dx will give you 2x and dv dx will give you cos x. Now from product formula, that is the formula for product formula, 
then we have shall substitute v is there du dx is there u is there dv dx is there the next is to simplify so now we shall go to question two question two says that if x is that and y is that show that this second derivative is equal to that So we are given x, so we shall defeat x to come up with dx d theta. So dx d theta, this a is constant, so that it is outside, then this bracket is what becomes this box bracket. So we'll open brackets, then you start differentiating. When I differentiate cos theta, I'll come up with negative sine theta. Then when it comes to theta sine theta, you realize that there is a product there. So you have to employ a product rule. Product formula, how does this state? Keep one constant, differentiate the other. So here, when I keep th this the constant, it is this. Then differentiate the other. So when I differentiate sine uh, theta, I'll come up with cos theta. Plus, now I'm going to keep sine theta the constant, which is this. Then differentiate the other. So differentiate theta to come up with 1. When I differentiate theta, I'll come up with 1. That is why here, there is only sine theta. When I simplify, this and this can cancel, so I remain with theta cos theta, but there is an a outside, so in the end you will come up with a theta cos theta. That was dx d theta. What about dy d theta? This is dy, so dy d theta. You are going to put out, put a outside, then now differentiate sine theta to come up with cos theta, then differentiate this. Now this one is a product, so you will keep one constant, differentiate the other. So this minus is here. Then when I keep theta constant, it is this. Differentiate cos theta, I'll come up with the negative sine theta. That's why there's negative here. Then plus, keep cos theta constant is there. Differentiate theta, I'll come up with 1. That is why here I only have cos theta. Then from there, I realize that this minus that cancels. So remain with this. So this and this is positive. So the, the outcome will be a theta sine theta, as you can see it there. The next is to get dy dx from chain rule. So from chain rule, dy d theta is this. Then dx d theta is this. Therefore, d theta dx is the reciprocal. That's why you see it here as a denominator. Then from there, I realize that this a cancels, this theta cancels. So sine over cos gives you tan. But remember the one second derivative, so you have to differentiate the second time. So second derivative will be d d theta of dy dx multiplied by d theta dx. Now d d theta dy dx is tan theta. And d theta dx is the reciprocal of this, as you can see it there. So when I differentiate tan, I'll come up with x squared theta multiplied by this one. You'll end up with this because 1 over cos is sec theta so sec theta multiplied by this gives you sec cubed theta and denominator shall be remaining with a theta which is there as required so that is how product formula is used but there is also quotient formula i think you also remember that under differentiation one so quotient formula we shall still go straight to the questions this time they are trig functions so if you want to know some quotient formula, the videos are already available in this platform. You just go to the playlist and search for differentiation 1. So question 1 says, find y dx if y is equal to this. So this is what is given. For so quotient, the numerator will always be u and the denominator will always be v. So don't interchange. So let u be equal to the numerator and v equal to the denominator. Then I'll differentiate both. So differentiate this to come up with u dx equal to that. I think you remember. You now know how to differentiate such function. This is under case three because the whole function is raised to a certain power and the angle is also multiplied by a certain integer. Then this one differentiate it will come up with dv dx equal to twelve x. Now from quotient formula, quotient formula is stated like that, that v du dx minus u dv dx over v squared is equal to du dx. Therefore, come and substitute. v is this, du dx is that, u is this, dv dx is that, v squared is that. Next is to simplify. So when I simplify, I'll come up with that. 
simplify further or factorize because here you realize that this one and this one are these have a common factor and the common factor is sine five x squared sine square of sine squared five x which is this then also this one ninety and this twelve have a common factor which is six so you also pull it out and also this one x squared and this x have a common factor which is x so you also pull it out so in the end you'll come you'll be remaining with in brackets for for this part you'll be remained with this and for this other part you'll be remained with this so next also this one and this can reduce this to become tube that's why you see a tube here and this six and also reduce this to become six that's why you see here six So that was question one. Now we shall go to question two. Question two says, find the derivative of this with respect to x. So this is also a question. So let y be equal to that function. The numerator will be u and the denominator will be v. Then differentiate. This gives you that and this gives you this. Then from quotient formula, that is the quotient formula. So we are going to substitute. When I substitute, v is that du dx is this, u is this, dv dx is that, v squared is that. I can now simplify. So when I simplify, this multiplied by this gives you this because negative 2 sine 2x multiplied by 1 gives you this. Then this one multiplied by this gives you that. Then also this side, this one gives you this, and the denominator remains the same. So I can simplify further by factorizing to come up with that. Then from there I realize that this identity here, because this, uh, this angle is the same, therefore sine, we saw that sine squared a plus cos squared a is equal to 1 under your list of mathematical formulae. So in this case, because this angle is the same, it implies that sine squared 2x plus cos squared 2x is equal to 1. So the whole of this is going to become 1. That is why here you see only negative 2. Then from there, factorize out negative 2 to remain with this plus 1. Then from there, this one can reduce this to re can reduce this power to come up with negative two over one plus sine two x, and that is the derivative they want. So now shall go to question three. Question three says, given that y is equal to that and x is equal to that, show that this second derivative is equal to that. So from y equal to this, we are the we are differentiated to come up with that. Then also x will be differentiated to come up with that. Then next is to use chain rule. When I use chain rule, I come up with this. And second derivative will be given by that. So this one differentiating it needs quotient formula. So quotient formula gives me that because it says that v keep the denominator constant to come up with that. Then differentiate the numerator to come up with this. Then after that, you'll keep the numerator constant, which is this. Differentiate the denominator to give me that. Then the, uh, over the square of the denominator, which is this. Then this one, the d theta dx, remember dx d theta was cos x, therefore d theta dx will be 1 over cos x. So it is maintained. So when I simplify, I'll come up with that. And from there, I realize that this plus this gives me 1. And basically, that is what they wanted. So that is all about quotient formula. Now we shall go to the last part and that is derivative of trigonometrical functions. Like I told you that when this 
power or oh, okay we have been calling it power but we have i told you the special case is when it is negative one so each time you see negative one it ceases to become a power it becomes now an inverse always remember that if it is any other value it is a power but as long as it is negative one it is no longer a power but it is a now an inverse so question one says differentiate the following functions with respect to x part a is that part b is that and part c is that so part a it was given by that social let y be equal to arc sine so we call it arc sine or inverse of sine x so inverse of sine x means th is noted as this or you can call it arc sine x it is all the same so what does the what this word inverse mean so to remove that negative part means that you take this sign this side so when i take this side i think you see here there is no now power negative one so it becomes sine y and this side what was the angle here is now what becomes here so that is how they remove the arc sign then next is to differentiate so dx differentiate x with respect to y i'll come up with dx dy equal to cos y because when i differentiate sine i'll come up with cos but remember in our question they want dy dx and also we don't know the value of y because remember y we are the ones who introduced it there so we have to again eliminate it by saying that remember the identity that cos y is equal to square root of 1 minus sine squared y and sine squared and sine y is x therefore sine squared y will be x squared so when i come and substitute i will come and say that now dy dx is the reciprocal of dx dy which is now 1 over cos y and now we already know that cos y is this so we shall come and get our final answer so that's how they deal with inverse so let's look at more examples for you to be able to grasp the concept so part b they want the derivative of inverse of cos x so still you let y be equal to that inverse then bring this cos this side become cos y equal to x then differentiate to come up with dx dy equal to negative sine y but i know that sine y is equal to square root of 1 minus cos squared y and cos y is x therefore it becomes 1 minus x squared therefore dy dx is the reciprocal of dx dy that is why you see here negative 1 over sine y and sine y you already got it here so that would be the answer what about part c where they want the derivative of tan actan derivative of actan x so let y be equal to that inverse therefore tan y will be equal to x therefore when i differentiate i'll come up with x squared so differentiate tan y i'll come up with x squared y but i know that x squared y is equal to 1 plus tan squared y and i know that tan y is x therefore x squared y will become 1 plus x squared Therefore, dy dx is the reciprocal of dx dy, which is 1 over x squared y, and gives you 1 over 1 plus x squared. That was question 1. Now let's go to question 2, which says that find dy dx if part a y is equal to arc sine of x over 5, and part b y is equal to arc cos of x cubed minus 3. So let's start with part A. Part A, we have y is equal to that. So next is to put this sign this side to come up with sine y equal to the angle which is x over 5. Now this is not the angle, it is the ratio. Sorry. So put derivative on both sides. Though when I differentiate this, when I differentiate sine y with respect to x, I come up with cos y dy dx. And differentiate x over 5 with respect to x, I come up with 1 over x let's call it equation one then we go and find out what is the value of cos y in terms of x so cos y is, is equal to the square root of one minus sine squared y but the good thing i know sine y in terms of x so i come and substitute it there then i simplify get lcm which is that 
and then square root of this 25 gives you 5 that is why now here the square root is only on the numerator so now I, now that I've got cos y in terms of x I'll come I can come back to my equation 1 and substitute for cos y then make dy dx the subject and it will be that so that was part a what about part b part b we are given y equal to that so take this on the other side to come up with cos y equal to this therefore put derivatives on both sides with respect to x to come up with this so differentiating cos y with respect to x gives you negative sine y dy dx and you shade this gives you 3x squared call it equation 1 and come and look for the expression of sine y in terms of x so sine y is equal to 1 minus cos squared y everything under square root but the good thing I know that cos y in terms of x is this so I'll come and substitute for cos y then simplify so open this bracket it gives you this then expand further it gives you that but remember there is still a square root the next is to put this negative factorize out negative one to come up with that then factorize further to come up with this the next is to put this negative in any one of these two brackets so if i choose to put it in this bracket it will change the sign so this was negative two it becomes positive two this was positive x cubed it become negative x cubed so now from there i come back to my equation one and substitute for sine y then make the y dx the subject and that is what they wanted so that was question 2 now I shall go to question 3 which is a differentiate actan of this with respect to x so still the same procedure let y be equal to that then take tan on this side of that differentiate both sides so differentiating tan y gives you sex squared y dy dx then you shade this this is now a quotient I think you remember quotient quotient means keep the numerator denominator constant which is that differentiate the, num, denom, differentiate the numerator which is that then after that you say minus keep the numerator constant which is that differentiate the denominator which is that everything divided by this denominator squared which is this then from there I'll come and simplify the right hand side to come up with that simplify further to come up with equation one now i have to look for this sex squared y because it was not y wasn't given in the question so i'll come as that but sex squared y is equal to one plus tan squared y therefore the good thing i know tan y is equal to this so i'll come and substitute i'll come and substitute this here then get the lcm and then open brackets open this bracket to come up with this simply correct like terms to come up with that now from there now that i've got sex squared y in terms of x i'll come back to my equation one and substitute for sex squared y then from there i'll simplify and make the y dx the subject and y dx will be equal to that so that was question three now shall go to question four which is that find in the simplest form the derivative of arc cos that so let y be equal to that given function then put cos on this side to come up with cos y equal to this ratio then differentiate put derivative on both sides so when i differentiate cos y with respect to x i'll come up with negative sine y dy dx and this one is now a quotient so i have to use quotient formula so quotient formula says keep the denominator constant which is this multiply by the derivative of the numerator which is that minus keep the numerator constant which is this multiply by the derivative of the denominator which is that everything divided by the denominator squared which is that so simplifying for simplifying gives me that then collecting like terms I'll come up with that and therefore this negative and this negative cancels and that becomes my equation one now i have to get sine y in terms of x so i'll come and say that sine y is equal to the square root of one minus cos squared y which gives me that because i already know that cos squared y is that then get lcm 
then difference of two squares gives me that for the numerator then simplify the numerator to come up with that and the end I'll come up with this as my sin y so now that I've got sin y I'll go back to equation 1 and substitute for sin y to come up with that then make the y dx the subject and that is what they wanted so that was question 4 now shall go to question 5 which says that differentiate x sine of this with respect to x expressing your result as simply as possible so the procedure will still remain the same let y be equal to this given function then from there, take this sign on this side to come up with sine y equal to this ratio. Then put the derivative on both sides. So when I differentiate sine y with respect to x, I come up with cos y dy dx. And this one is now a quotient. So I'll still use the method of co quotient formula. So quotient formula says, keep the denominator constant, which is this, multiplied by derivative of the numerator, which is that minus keep the numerator constant which is this multiplied by derivative of the denominator which is that everything divided by derivative of sorry everything divided by the denominator squared the next is to simplify so when i simplify I realize that this sign x and this sign x are common so i first pull it out when i pull it out what will happen this is what is going to happen this, now uh, here I'm left with negative 5 so negative 5 times 5 gives me negative 25 and negative 5 times 3 gives you negative 15 and this course is maintained what about this side this side I remain with negative 3 so negative 3 by 3 gives you negative 9 which is there and also negative 3 by 5 gives me negative 15 which is there this minus is maintained and this sign and this course is maintained So next is to simplify this further. So if you look at this twenty negative twenty-five plus nine gives you negative sixteen, and also negative fifteen plus positive fifteen gives you zero. So in the end I'll come up with that. And according to equation one, then I'll go and get my value of cos y. So cos y is equal to square root of 1 minus sine squared y and sine y is that therefore sine squared will be will have a square there then get LCM to come up with that part then difference of two squares for the numerator gives you that then simplify each bracket to come up with that so this bracket gives me this and this bracket gives me that then denominator remains the same then open brackets to come up with that then collect like terms, you realize that you come up with this for the numerator. So 16 is common, so pull it out. Then 1 minus cos squared x gives me sine squared x. So square root of this numerator gives you 4 sine x, and the end it will be this. But that is not the end, that is only the value of cos y. So we have to go ahead and substitute in equation 1. Therefore, you come and say that from equation 1, that is that the substitution, then make the y dx the subject. And that will be the answer. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and be reminded that the next video will be on integration of trigonometrical functions. So if you have not yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button below this video so that you can receive updates when the next video on integration of trigonometrical functions has been uploaded. Otherwise, thank you for watching and also if you know of any student who's not yet on this platform please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like facebook and whatsapp so that we can all benefit as a family